Hey, this is Dave coming at you from Michigan. Uh, we've got another update. We got the heated flooring tubing in. The concrete guys knocked out the foam. We got these tarps up to keep the leaves and the wind from blowing out, but let's go check out, see what we got done here. I wanna do a video in the next few days, Monday, Tuesday, where, we, where I can film my son and his friend Chris actually doing it. But there's a lot of videos that show kind of how you do it, but um, I can talk about more like the specifics and codes and stuff, I guess. So here it is. The garage is all done. Yeah, and even though it's a heated floor, um, the manifold is through the wall and on the basement wall down there. Um, you could use three quarter pipes, but I just used one inch right here, uh, just because it's just a little bit better, easier to get through them. Um, oh, and then right here, this is the way the instructions called for it, and I called the company I bought the materials for. We just drilled another hole with no pipe it, it just it basically sticks out the wall out there like one inch out and then you just duct tape it to nothing like right there all that's for is the thermostat it's like a little tiny maybe it looks like a tadpole almost with a long wire on it and they said it's only like a quarter inch three eighths and that they usually just use pex for that and that way after it's poured you can just slide the thermostat in i don't know how far but i think you said it only has to go in a couple feet um, th that way it gets and he says uh, put it between two of your layouts so you're, so you're 12 inches so basically this whole floor was designed uh, a 12 inch spacing I know I've seen a lot of videos where they do nine inch spacings um, but for whatever reason the company I use they're just it's all about 12 inch it actually says right on the half inch pecs I, I actually looked up the code on this um, and uh, I could be wrong but it says that the maximum you want to bend or would that be minimum? The smallest bend you can make with half inch pecs is uh, a 12 inch bend. And I can tell, you know what, you wouldn't want to bend it too much more. There's a couple, it's like 12 and it's not kinking, but you know, I, I could tell if it went to like, like here's a, t a little bit of a tighter one here. You don't want to go too much, too much more than that. The concrete guys told me that the biggest problem they have with people that install this is they just don't staple it enough. So we stapled the heck out of it. You get 200 staples, I believe, for like $28. And for a job this size, I just figured, you know, we went like every 16 inches. There might be a couple in here that are going close to 24, but it's mostly 16. We did three staples at least on each corner. This, these staples hold really good. Um, I might as well kind of make this a the stapler review uh, video too because this stapler, there's a lot of them out there. Um, and I, I saw another video that has another guy co commenting on the same exact tool after I bought this one, which kind of made me happy because I hadn't used it yet. Um, and he says for the, for the money, it's basically $250 for the tool. It worked really good. It, I think out of all of these staples, that jam all, all the, this job so far right here, which is 1,200 square feet, we had the thing jammed twice. And I think one of them was because I just... We didn't quite have the pipe right. I didn't want to commit to push down hard enough and it jammed because I kind of like just went halfway down. Other than that, I, I think it only jammed like one other time for some reason, but, um, but yeah, I'm excited. Right now, this is currently holding 50 pounds of pressure. I'm not too clear as what the, you know, to me, it seems like if it holds it for about a half an hour, it's fine. Um, I think the township where I live, they're wanting it to be there 24 hours. So they basically want you to pressurize it and then right on the temp board or however you have it mounted when you did it we did it at 11 55 this morning i really don't know what the date is today i think it's like the 16th or 17th i have no clue but we'll write that down and then we also want to write down the temperature outside of when we did it which was about 50 degrees because from what i understand if it's 50 degrees and then you come back in and it's 70 degrees the, the psi could probably be up as high as 54 pounds and if it got colder, let's say we walked in, we put the, it, it on 50 degrees, and it ends up being 30 degrees that day, um, it would probably decrease the pressure because the air gets more dense. So it says right on the instructions that 
the temp, the press, the PSI can change three to four pounds depending on the temperature outside of when you did it versus when you're checking it. So anyways, let's go downstairs. I'll show you what we did down there. It looks a lot different than the last video of when I just showed you the plumbing. And we've since gotten the furnace since the last video. The furnace is all set. We'll be walking by it right here, the exhaust of it. We already got off today. It's only like 12.30. We just worked a half a day today. We were we worked really hard yesterday. The concrete guys were here and you know, it's just an easy day. We just hooked up the manifold and pressurized it, but we got it right here. This is not double wall, it's 90, but this is all the way because this is, you know, the coat is, I believe it's six inches and that's three and a half feet. So let's go down here. I'm not turn an ankle on the way down. This is the scrap tubing just from cutting the excess off from hooking up the manifold. They used a little bit different of a foam here. It's a little bit softer dense. It doesn't take as much PS, uh, pressure per square foot or pounds per square foot, but it's a basement floor. There's not gonna be any cars. There's not gonna be any heavy equipment in here. I don't remember exactly what the pounds per square foot is, but it, it was enough. It's like a hundred or something and upstairs it's like 200 or something. It's like double. And you can tell by walking on this, it's. It's a little bit softer. It's still rigid, but it's a little bit softer. We already have the five coils, took off all the wrapping here. But yeah, this is it. We have, they got it all um, screeded and they used their uh, transit, their laser level to get the P-Stone. Six mil plastic under the whole entire thing. And then our tech two inch foam through the, through the whole entire basement. And then today, this is what we did. We, well, we set up our little table here. And then we put in a, this is pretty much represents the, the wall that will be built here. And a lot of videos I've seen shows there's no nipple on the pipe glued, but I just put an eight inch nipple. That way I could put two scrap straps on each pipe without them, you know, pivoting on the strap. And then once the, um, it, it, it just, that'll hold it. And you don't have to strap down because I figured running Phillips bit screws into softer foam probably is not going to hold it that well. So we just did two on the the board and then we basically spaced it exactly how the manifold will be. The manifold, you know, the finished concrete will be, you know, four inches above this now. So four inches is about, you know, 10. They said 18. So really once this comes out, you know, the, the bottom of the manifold will be like right here. So it'll still be lower. And then once all that's done, the manifold gets pressurized and then you're gonna have components right here. But the way these uh, floor companies work is they have separate pricing for the under uh, slab fittings and pipe and all that. And then, and they don't, they didn't provide the staples either because they don't know if you're doing tie wraps, staples. They don't know what gun you have. They were going to supply the, um, the uh, tie wraps because they thought we were gonna do re-rod, but we're gonna staple it right down to here. So um, I think he said he's still going to do re-rod still on top of my piping, but that's you can do that. So here, I'll go show you the garage manifold back here. Same thing, we just built a, a temp wall, kind of just hung it, it's real easy, just two studs hanging down with a piece of plywood. I think we figured, you know, five and a, five and a half inches for the two by six wall, an inch gap behind that wall, so that's six and a half, plus half inch drywall, seven and then three quarter inch for, I think I'm gonna mount a finished three quarter inch piece of plywood on top of the drywall, just because it's better to put heavy equipment and valves and pumps and all of that stuff on like wood instead of trying to mount that on drywall. That's kind of, you got drywall powder and you know, if you put something wrong, you'll get flakes and chunks coming out. We're not gonna do that. So, I ran these pipes pretty neat. It's not exactly where it's gonna go. That's why they're kind of looking weird, but it, this is literally just kind of floating here. It's not, I just have two straps there with these copper spacings like this, these fittings that are like bell fittings that they supplied us with. And yep, it's still literally holding at 51 pounds. It was just over, if anything, it makes sense. It actually looks like it's increased by a quarter pound because it's actually, the sun came out about an hour ago and it's hard to say you have a leak if the pressure's going up, <laughs> you know? So that's how, and to hook this up, all I did was I had all these things hanging long. 
All I did is got this one right where I wanted it as far as level. And I just, and I strapped just this pipe to this, just the, that one by itself. And then I just kept pulling these up and down to get the loop equal on the top. And I would just eyeball across from there, cut that one. So all these were just cut loose. And then you just put it on the manifold loose. I just set the manifold up on top of my ladder. And I just put all these on when the manifold's loose. It, it, you don't want to put it on here. It, it doesn't, you can just tighten all of those when the manifold's loose on top of a ladder. And so you can see, I don't know, I'm, I'm recording off an iPhone, so I'm, it's probably blurry. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's blurry. I don't know. Maybe that's just my sight, but I can assure you that says 50 pounds of pressure and it's been there now for about an hour. So um, with that, I'm going to call the inspector, the plumbing inspector right now. I didn't want to call the inspection in when uh, all of a sudden we have a leak and we don't know what's going on. And then I'd have to call and, and, and cancel it and, and probably say why I canceled and that's not good either. Oh, real quick though, this valve, and this is from Radiant Tech. Um, I might as well put a little plug in for them. It's Radiant Tech, and it's like the T and the Tech is like one letter. It's all one word, Radiant, and then EC, Radiant Tech. Um, it's a company, I believe, out of Vermont. Um, the guy that I've been dealing with mostly is Dan, or I'm sorry, Don Vance. And he's been a really friendly guy from the very beginning. Um, he's been very, uh, he just tells us anything we want to know, any questions. Not, there's not a question that's a stupid question. Um, it's been a great company to deal with. So if anybody ever wants to do a heated flooring system, it's right online, Radiant Tech. And uh, Debbie's a really friendly lady that answers the phone. And the main guy that you'd want to talk to is uh, Don Vance. So anyways, yeah, this is it. And uh, I'll keep the videos coming. This is Dave signing off. Oh, there's my friend Greg. <laughs>